I have one sibling, a sister, and today she is celebrating a birthday. I very much love my sister and I wish her an absolutely fabulous, super duper happy birthday. Um, I'm her older sibling, a brother, and uh, very often, many times throughout her life, she uh, sought comfort and refuge in me, especially when she was in uh, troubling situations, like when she set a tool shed on fire <laughs> by accident. Um, she was very shaken by it, so um, she disappeared from home and would see only me, and after she saw me she was uh, crying and sobbing and uh, um, and took a lot of emotional support uh, from me. So, I'm very happy to have a sister and uh, and I was always happy to uh, be there when she needed me. <clears throat> but today is her birthday and uh, on the topic of birthday I'd like to take a look at this thing, the birthday, from the point of view of a yogi or a transcendentalist. Uh, a human birth especially is considered very, very special. There are many different forms of life. As a matter of fact, in the Vedas, a number is given of 8,400,000 forms of life. So there's, there are many, many forms of life. And there is one aspect to the human life uh, that makes it different from all other forms of life, which would make a human birthday <laughs> very special. And what is that thing? There's this one unique thing um, to human life and human birth is that in human form of life, one can achieve that which cannot or cannot be achieved in other forms of life or <clears throat> would be very difficult to achieve in other forms of life. The human form, the human body is so sophisticated, um, it's so complex and it's so fine that in it one can experience greatest pleasures. Uh, not just gross pleasures such as the ones we experience uh, when placing our senses in contact with the sense objects, you know, tongue with food, skin with uh, soft objects, ears with sound and so on. But even intellectual pleasures, uh, pleasures that come from uh, learning. Uh, and then ultimately the greatest pleasure which comes from wisdom. And wisdom leads to, uh, of course, the value, the very function of wisdom is to um, uh, to reveal the deepest truths about ourselves and the existence, and how it all connects together. So, in human life, uh, chances for advancing in wisdom are by far the greatest. Uh, it is more likely to achieve self-realization in the human form of life than, let's say, that in a dog or a hog or a tree. So, to endeavor for things while in the human body, to endeavor for things which are automatically obtained in other forms of life would be a really, um, in a sense, a waste of time and waste of this amazing opportunity called the human life. Um, the animals, the plants, the humans, they all do four things. They all have four things in common, which is we all eat, we all sleep, uh, we all have some sort of sex life, and, uh, and we defend. Animals may use the claws and paws and 
and humans may use sophisticated machinery but it, it's the same thing uh, humans may have uh, sexual activity in uh, in an expensive suite whereas dog does it on the street but it's the same business the category of that activity has not changed it's the same business so humans can actually go beyond that and that is that acquisition of wisdom, uh, to understand the self, to understand the soul, and thus obtain the finest pleasures in, uh, in life, happiness. Um, and so I hope that, hope that my sister is having uh, a blessed birthday, <laughs> and is. Uh, with each birthday is coming closer to, um, to spiritual awakening and thus fully realizing the potential of the human form of life. Hare Krishna.